This is a video about how to get ahead of 99% of riders in the next six to 12 months. By some accounts, 80% of people say they want to write a book. But of the few people who actually start, only 3% actually finish a novel. And of the small number that actually finish, only a small number of those writers then go on to be writing something that's good enough to actually publish and find a readership. So this is a video about how to get into that top 1%. That top 1% of writers who can consistently finish and publish books that readers love. It took me six years of writing before I published my very first paid short story, A Clockwork Prison. And I remember being so stoked that a magazine was paying me 50 bucks for this thing I'd written. From that point, then it took another couple of years before I I was actually publishing novels. But if I knew then what I know now, having now published three novels and a video game, I could have reached publication much faster. So this video is going to be covering five principles that I wish I could have been told as a younger writer. And if you can execute on these principles consistently for the next six to 12 months, you will be ahead of pretty much every aspiring writer out there. Principle one, maximize your creative energy. The first step here is to take stock of your physical energy. Do you generally feel very energetic, enthusiastic, and motivated as you go throughout your day? Or do you feel lethargic, unfocused, and unproductive? Failing to nourish your physical form means that your mental and creative performance will suffer. So as writers, we can often put a ton of focus on time management, but I actually think that energy management might be even more important to optimize. That's because gaining abundant energy is one of the biggest levers that you can pull to massively increase your output and enjoyment as a writer. I mean, you just have to think about it, right? Like if you were able to have 10% more energy than you have right now in your life, how much more would that improve your life and your writing and your stories? So optimizing your energy is really worth it. And most people I meet have a ton of room left to optimize when it comes to this regard. Personally for me, the biggest thing that helps with my energy levels and keeping them really high is exercise. Welcome to my happy place. It is time to climb. A little faster with the feet. Without question, exercise plays such a pivotal role in shaping and boosting my creative energy. So if you personally have not found a form of exercise that you enjoy participating in at least three times a week, then keep looking, try to seek it out. I know that might sound like a basic point, but really developing that strong physical foundation of your life is going to set you up to achieve your creative and writing goals. Principle two, create a harmonious day job. So if you're like most writers starting out, you're probably gonna be balancing a day job with your writing. And for many people, they see these things as these opposing forces, right? You're spending 40 hours a week slaving away at this day job and you're not spending that time writing. And it can be easy to have this antagonistic relationship with your work. I really think that it is super important, especially in those early years as you're starting out as a writer, to try to develop a good sense of harmony between your day job and your writing, your creative pursuits. Because again, this all comes down to leverage. Being able to get a day job that you only have to work at, let's say 30 hours a week instead of 40 hours a week, the leverage that gives you by granting you an extra 10 hours every single week that you can use on your writing, that is something that just pays off over time and the dividends of that really compound when it comes to giving you this time and energy and focus to work on your writing. On a practical level, what I've found in my own experience is that the way to really find and create a harmonious day job is to begin by learning a leveraged high income skill. So an example of a skill with very low leverage would be something like, let's say, bricklaying. Now I'm not saying bricklaying is bad by any means, but the fact is that you could be the world's best bricklayer and you would maybe put down 20% more bricks an hour than someone who has just started out. On the other hand, a leverage skill is one where the rewards are exponential. So for example, the world's best programmer is not getting paid 20% better than an average programmer. The world's best programmer is getting paid thousands of times more because the leverage and the outcome of what they are producing from their role has unlimited upside. So if you can find a way to develop a very leveraged high income skill that is gonna generate a lot of value for a business out there, you're just gonna have more options when it comes to the flexibility, the hours, and the general arrangement of your work. So in my own career, I've progressed from you know working as an intern in an architect, a very low leverage job, to nowadays I work at a tech startup where I do their writing, I do a lot of copywriting for them. It's actually very enjoyable because I get to learn a lot about finance and apply my writing skills to explaining financial concepts to investors. And that is a very leveraged high income skill because the articles I'm writing and the newsletters I'm writing for this company, they don't just go out to one person, they go out to like our readership is over 100,000 people on our newsletter. So because that is a high leverage job, 
I'm able to have a bit more flexibility when it comes to, you know, my working arrangements, my hours, and just how I approach the thing. So for example, I only work three days a week at this day job, and I also work fully remotely there as well. In fact, I'm recording this video before I'm about to jump on the computer and do some work for that day job right now. The other thing that's maybe worthwhile considering here is that the skills you're gaining and developing as a writer could actually be very beneficial if you strategically apply them in a business sense. So I actually got this job without having really any financial experience. I actually got this job because I had written books, because I had you know, put out podcasts and newsletters before, and I was just a you know good enough writer to actually get this job, even though it's not writing fiction, it's sort of writing financial nonfiction pieces. So if you've progressed along your journey as a writer, you might actually have quite a few skills that could translate quite nicely over to another job like this. If I was to boil this point down about creating a harmonious day job to three key principles, it would probably be, number one, find something low stress. If you have a job that is really kind of making you tear your hair out and is very mentally and emotionally draining, it can be hard to shift from that into working on your writing. The job I have right now is extremely low stress and that allows me to have a lot of mental energy and clarity when it comes to my writing. Number two, consider remote work. When you cut out the commute, you can find a lot of time back in your day and also it gives you just that opportunity for if you need to jot down an idea for your story or whatever, you can just take five minutes and jot that down and not really feel guilty that you might get caught doing it at work or something like that. And then number three, consider part-time work. So like I said, I work three days a week at my current day job. Partly that is because, you know, my writing is at the point now where there are actually quite a few months where it makes more than the day job. But even if that's not the case, I think, again, this all comes back down to giving yourself the maximum leverage to achieve your writing goals. If you're able to develop the discipline to reduce your spending habits by 20%, that can then allow you to cut one day per week off your day job. And then how much more time and energy are you going to have to focus on your writing? I was talking about this to a coaching client a while ago, actually, um, in my story coaching program. And he was really struck by this point because I was telling him, you know, uh, you can have, you know, the holiday once a year where you go off for a week and you sort of escape from your life and have this experience of being in this beautiful place. And that's fine. Like, no judgment on that if that's what you want. But if you instead decide to not go off on such an expensive holiday. Maybe you just go for a road trip near your town or your house or wherever it is. And instead you take those savings and you decide to reduce one day per week at your day job. Now all of a sudden it's not this one week escape that you're getting on that holiday. Now all of a sudden you're getting an extra 52 days or 50 days or whatever it is over the course of the year that you now have back to work on your writing. And ultimately it's a matter of priorities, right? Like if this writing is something that's really important to you, then Perhaps you need to adjust your spending habits and try to kind of decrease the hours of that day job to give yourself the time to actually work on this thing that you say is important. Of course, everyone's situation is very different, but I think if there's one thing that the pandemic has sort of taught us over the last few years, it's that there is more room for flexibility in our working and living arrangements than we maybe have assumed for a very long time. So don't just operate blindly, question the assumptions that are guiding the way that you live your life and consider from a first principles basis whether the current setup you have with your job is the most optimal for your general living and also your writing as well. Principle three, write 1,000 words per day. Depending on where you are with your writing, 1,000 words per day might sound like a ton or it might sound like not a lot at all. But either way, if you can write just 1,000 words per day consistently, every single day, by the end of three months, you will have a finished 90,000 word first draft, which you can then go on to edit and refine and develop further. Remember at the top of the video when I said that only 3% of people finish a novel? If you can stick to a thousand words every day for the next 90 days, you will be in that top percentile. So how do you practically produce a thousand words per day? This could obviously be a whole video in itself, but I think there's sort of three key points with this. First, track your word counts. I personally use an Excel spreadsheet to record my daily word counts, and this helps to gamify the process and to encourage consistency. Second, optimize for enjoyment. If you're writing your first book because you're hoping to sell lots of copies and make a ton of money, then you're probably going to struggle a lot with that process because your motivation is extrinsic. It is external rather than being intrinsic or internal to yourself. If you're a first time writer, I strongly encourage you to make your motivation as intrinsic as possible. Write a story that you crave to read. Don't worry about marketability or publishing at this stage. Just focus on developing the skill and the craft of learning to write great novels and to enjoy the process. Later on, then you can add in an understanding of marketing and publishing if you so desire. And quite transparently, this is exactly how I've done it. The first couple of books that I wrote, they were all just done for my own enjoyment. I wasn't even considering whether this was a marketable genre or if readers would enjoy this thing or not. And then it's only with recent projects that I have still retained that sense of writing something that I really enjoy, but I've also looked for that Venn diagram intersection between 
Stuff that I would really enjoy writing and then stuff that other people would enjoy reading. And then my third point related to writing a thousand words per day is to develop better knowledge around what you're going to write. The more clarity you have around the direction of your story, the faster and easier it will be to write. This is why I'm personally such a huge fan of outlining. Outlining means that when I sit down to write, I just know what scene is gonna come next and I never have to stare at a blank page and try to invent myself out of this situation. Now, if you don't like outlining, first of all, please give it a try if you haven't already. You might be surprised by how much you actually enjoy it. And it's important to not impose limiting beliefs upon yourself about what type of writer you are or what techniques that don't work for you until you've actually tried it in a serious way. But even if you still don't like outlining, after all of that, you can still use techniques to increase your knowledge so that you are finding it easier to hit that thousand words per day. One technique which I've discussed before is to construct a quick writer's brief. Essentially, at the beginning of every day's writing session, you just get out a notebook and you jot down a few bullet points answering the following questions. What am I gonna write about? How does this progress the plot? How does this progress my characters? Why will this be a reader's favorite scene? Again, the goal here is simply to get the mind moving and to avoid coming into a session feeling completely mentally blank. By outlining or using a writer's brief, you are preloading inspiration and it makes it much easier to get over that blank page. Now, there are of course a lot more nuances to discuss when it comes to developing a consistent and productive writing habit, which is why I created my Easy Writing Habits course. Easy Writing Habits is a step-by-step -step guided program guaranteed to make you a more productive and consistent writer. You can read all the details in the link in the description down below, but I figure the best way to tell you about the course is just to let you know what some of my past students have said. Hello, my name is Jesse, a practicing lawyer and is my review of Jed Hen's writing course. Since getting this course, it has really transformed the way I see my shadow. It's quite demystified the whole process and um, really drilled it down to a science. What really was great for me is it takes conceptual things like improvement, momentum, resistance, self-reflection, and makes them concrete. It gives you physical tactics. And I think I've already improved as a writer just taking the course, and it's something that I'll always go back to. Uh, the really big iron opening one was your definition of writer's block, uh, coming from a suspicion that my story might be flawed. Um, and that's, I've heard a couple of different ideas about where writer's block comes from. That's the first one that's really resonated with me um, and gave me some idea for useful action items I can take to overcome writer's block. So those were really cool. If you do join, Easy Writing Habits comes with a 30 day money back guarantee because I wanna make sure that it's giving you a ton of value as a writer. So if you wanna check it out, click the link on the screen up here or in the description down below. I've had a ton of writers go through this course and get a lot out of it and I hope that you can do the same. Principle four, work on something small and achievable. A common mistake I see with authors starting out, particularly fantasy authors starting out, is they try to bite off more than they can chew. They start working on the first book in their massive 10 volume fantasy epic. And that can work. There are definitely stories of people who, who try that and they succeed. However, I think that most authors starting out are probably going to do better if they kind of keep the scale low and they write something that has a single point of view character and is a self-contained novel. The reason behind this is that when you're writing your first book, there are just so many different elements to balance here. You've got the plot, you've got the dialogue, you've got your prose, you've got your character arcs, you've got all of these different things going on. And I think that it can be overwhelming at times if you add on to that this idea that you have to write multiple books in this series or that you have to have multiple point of view characters that you're all juggling here. Sometimes it can be better to sort of keep the stakes a little bit smaller and make it more manageable and easy for you to write that story. Novellas, you know, short novels, we're talking maybe 20,000, 30,000 words here, can also be a really good place to start. And that's what I did. My very first thing that I published was Fires of the Dead, a 20,000 word fantasy novella. Ultimately here, the goal is completion and experience with all aspects of the writing process. So if you're working on that 300,000 word book one in a 10 book fantasy series epic, it's going to be quite difficult to maybe get through that process. If on the other hand, you set yourself the task of, I'm going to write something that's 80,000 words, it's one single point of view character, and it's a more linear, uh, less complicated plot, then you are probably more likely to actually finish that thing. And then you can take the skills and expertise that you've learned from that book, and you can apply it to something that is maybe a bit bigger, a bit more complicated, a bit more involved. And then the last principle is to embrace the magic. At its best, writing is a magical process. It is a process of stepping through the screen into the world of your story, into living out these lives of these different characters that you've created. 
feeling those characters cease to just become names on a page and to actually become real people who you think about, who you communicate with in the way that you would with a friend. So if you want to be achieving your writing goals over the next 6 to 12 months, I think it's really important to embrace the magic and to soak up the joy of this process. Because again, it's all about enjoying this process to motivate you to continue with it. And nothing is more inspiring than waking up every day to work on a story that you feel such a deep emotional, this almost magical connection to. So I know this is a bit of an esoteric point, so to make this idea of embracing the magic of the writing process a bit more tangible, here's four kind of ideas that for me personally are quite useful with this factor. Number one is to use inspiring music while you write. So I'm often listening to sort of instrumental music when I'm writing. I would avoid listening to anything that has lyrics in it because it will be distracting for you. But I often find instrumental music, Two Steps From Hell, Audio Machine, Hans Zimmer's scores, trailer music, you know, music and scores from movies and video games out there are very inspiring to me as I write because they often have such a great emotional swell to them. The second aspect is to use inspiring locations. So sometimes I will be writing just here in this room, but quite often I'll be going to a library or to a cafe or to some other spot that is a enjoyable and inspiring location to write. A place that sort of infuses me with a sense that I am connected to something deeper as I explore this story. And then the third idea here is purposeful daydreaming. Allow your mind to wander. Allow yourself to consider different directions and possibilities for your story and your characters. Often these aimless daydreaming sessions will make you very excited to write and can also sometimes give you the best ideas that you might have for your scenes, or for your plot, or for your characters. And then idea number four is to write the story you dream of reading. Because when you do that, you will feel such an immense purpose and an immense sense of calling to bring this story into the world. And of course, even though this video is called How to Get Ahead of 99% of Other Writers, it's not really about getting ahead of anyone else. It's about getting ahead of yourself. Personally, I don't think writing is a competition with other authors out there. It's a competition with yourself. And it's about showing up, doing the work, expressing yourself authentically, and just trying to get a little bit better every single day. Not comparing yourself to other authors, just comparing yourself to who you were yesterday. So today, when you sit down to write, can you write a little bit more than usual? Can you dig a little deeper into your characters? Can you make your dialogue just a bit more crispy? Commit to this path of continual improvement and your stories will only get better. And for those of you in pursuit of great stories, to you I say, keep writing and keep striving.